And here we are back at Sapphire 39. Lisa Ann here with Lisa Ann's Backstage Convos. Today, I am so excited to have this conversation with you. You get to just be listening in as I introduce you to Molly Little. Molly is at Sapphire for her very first feature booking with a bright career in front of her. And I can't wait to get inside that beautiful mind. Molly, thank you so much for coming over and joining me here today. Oh, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. So Molly, uh, you've done about 40 scenes. Uh, you have integrated yourself into the industry. You have your OnlyFans page. You do all of this. When was it that you decided, you know what, I think I want to feature dance? Um, honestly, I've wanted to feature dance since before I even got in the porn industry. I've been dancing uh, since I turned 18. Um, it's always just kind of been like a passion. I really enjoy uh, being on the pole and like being on stage. And so, you know, it was just kind of like a perk that came along with being successful in porn. It was like, oh, now I get to feature dance. And that's the same way I got in, by the way. Like, I danced first, and I danced at a club that had features. Yeah. And so I would watch them, and I'd be like, they get to travel all around. They get to see different customers or, like, a limited time offer. So you grew up in Virginia. Did you work at a club that had features? Um, I didn't work at a club that had features, but I had heard stories of, like, other dancers that had. Because and... Silk is by there, right? There was a Silk club. What club did you work at? Um, I worked at a club called CCR. Okay. Um but I don't know if Silk is still there, but I think the, the best club in DC was Camelot and they had features. Okay. Did yeah. you go to see any features to like, you know, see like what people expect? Um, I would have, but I can't because I'm not 21. Oh my gosh, this is the best part about it. I was 21. So this makes perfect sense. You can't go and see features. Well, you could if you went to like, uh, Spirit Rhinos or Deja Vu's like juice bars. They would okay. have to be the 18 and up clubs, but okay. I, this, this thought didn't even. Okay, so here you are, and you now know that you, you really want to do this. What were your thoughts when you started to say, okay, how am I going to put my shows together, costume-wise, music-wise? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's your, what are you going to embody when you're on stage? Um, I really love, like, just the feminine energy, like, the soft, sensual side of myself really comes out. I don't really have, like a fat ass to shake on stage. So I'm not a twerker, but I love just like long, like flowy movements. And I'm a dancer. So like, I really enjoy expressing myself through that. But as for outfits, um, I I brought like six different outfits because I still for one haven't show, right? I still haven't decided like which ones I'm gonna wear. But um, they all are very like angelic, I would say. That's so beautiful. I yes. love that you're having fun with it. Yeah. Because you're going to use them eventually, right? You don't know which oh, ones you're going to use here, but you're going to use them eventually. How many gigs do you have lined up and how often do you think you want to feature dance monthly? Um, so far, I have four gigs lined up for the rest of the year. Um, so that's, I think... About one or so a month, every every three weeks? Yeah. How exciting. Um, but no, I'm very excited. And I'm doing one in um, Mexico, too. So I've never been to Mexico. See, you're getting already getting to go places you haven't gone. So I know that you like to do hot yoga. And so all of that stretching is probably really helpful for you in your pursuit and your love of dancing. Uh, actually, yeah. So when I was also like kind of training in pole, I was doing hot yoga and I would do both of those every single day. Um, and like I got my splits really fast. Um, doing that together and so that's always a fun little trick to like put on stage um but it's cool that's great i mean you might even search them out when you travel yeah and go and find different studios it's fun to be a guest and go to like i used to love to find different gyms on the road because like okay. you scope them out something to do you know yeah. when you're in a small town for three days there's not a lot of dude now with uber think about it when i was on the road there was no uber and there was no delivery food wow pizza was really the only thing you got delivered to a hotel room back in the day Wow, so you had to order room service if, if it was you didn't open. want pizza? You got yeah. home from the club. It's not open. I mean, the, our, our struggle was real. Wow. We ate a lot That's of Waffle commitment. House. It's, yeah. we, we didn't know any different. We, <laughs> we didn't really know what we were missing. So what are your goals in the industry? Do you plan to pursue a long career, full-time uh, featuring, and part-time shooting? Yeah, so basically my goals in the industry is to like put full force into every 
avenue that I have. So like I would love to feature dance as much as possible. I still do scenes. Um, I'm doing like a, a couple scenes a week at least. Um, I'm definitely want to dive more into like the social media side of things, like um, the TikTok side of things and stuff. But I've actually been coming on podcasts a lot and just kind of talking and, you know, showing off who Molly Little is and expressing myself. I love it. I mean, it gets easier each time, right? Yeah. Conversations. And also you get to know like other people's cadence and you start to like read the room and by like your second year on the road, you'll have done so many interviews. It's just like, you'll walk in, you'll just do it. It's like not even a thing. You don't even think about it anymore. Yeah. But I just did like a five hour long one. So this one being like- Holy shit. Oh my Who God. Who fucking it- <laughs> made you do a five hour podcast? And what the fuck did that person ask you for five hours? It was like a dating podcast, okay. but it was, it was like seven other people on the panel. And oh, that's annoying. It was You know very- what? Cause you probably talked for like 30 minutes of that five hours. Oh no, I talked a lot. I <laughs> did. You chimed in. All right, Molly. She's got the balls. Yeah. You chimed in. Did you yeah. give good or bad dating advice? Um, I mean like I gave my dating advice, which, you know, is a little out there. It's always unique. Okay, bring it. We'd <laughs> um, love to know your dating advice. Well, I just think that like, you know, I definitely agree with like the fact that in a traditional sense, like men should be providers and like women should stay at home, but I don't see anything wrong with, you know, a woman going out and making her own money and however she wants to make that money is very respectable as long as it's legal. And, Agreed. Yeah. I, I see that. Okay. Did anyone at the seven person panel like lose their fucking shit on you? So I was the only sex worker on okay. the whole We're panel. Right okay. So and that's everyone there we else go. was conservative. So Oof. it was very, very rough. But, but for you, that's a stand-up woman right there yeah. in you. The fact that you were like, you know what? I know what I'm being thrown into. I know how everybody is probably viewing me and judge me. Look, at the end of the day, it's how much money you save and where you put yourself in your future is mm-hmm. why you're here. Yes. And while you're here, why not have some fun? <laughs> exactly. So do you have fun doing your scenes? I love it. Yeah. I've literally, like, the people that I've met in porn are some of, like, the coolest people that I've ever met Easy in going. life yeah like really awesome and unique people and it's like I don't know I never would have gotten this life experience if I hadn't started it and there's fun things about being on set yeah you know the whole makeup artist the whole doing pretty girls I love taking, it I, seeing the different locations when they're renting houses like yes. all of it people don't understand it tickles, it's very glam it's very glam it tickles your fancy when it comes to, like your curious part like I learned my whole way around LA from different porn sets yeah me too yeah you're like oh I've been on this street before yeah. I know where we are okay yeah. And like the different areas, the different towns. Right, Encino yeah. or Sherman Oaks mm-hmm. or Studio City, or maybe you're going up to Calabasas. Yeah. But you learn your way around. And, you know, taking photos is such a, I don't know, it's a silent way that we really express ourselves. Do you feel that way? 100. I think it's an art form. Like, I really do. I think that, like, um, you know, being a porn actress is also being a model and you have to model your sexuality. Um, and I think that's really powerful and it can be really fun. Yeah, it is. Especially you put a little bit of music on. Yeah. You're on set. You're like, where else well, can I the work? Best. Where where and they let you pick the music. Yes. They, and you get to just go into the zone and fantasize about who is going to be looking at these photos on the other end. And the fact that you're just, you know, getting to ex- feel sexy and express yourself and be And people pr- love it. I and know. like they love who who you are when you are like the sexual feminine being. And it's really nice to have a safe space to express that. And did Feel, you say safe space, and I, I I tell a lot of people, like, there's a lot of things we do on set that we might not be comfortable doing with a stranger that we met in our life. You know, we have people there, like, we can get a little bit more sexually creative. Yeah, 100%. I think that's something a lot of people don't understand, is, like, people think that, like, you might feel awkward with, like, a bunch of people watching you with the lights and the whatever, but for me, that makes me feel so much more comfortable because... They're all doing their job. They're not looking at me in a sexual way. So for me, I have full capacity to just go crazy for the camera and for the people watching. That comes from being a dancer too. Yeah. And it's not for everybody. Like for my friends, I remember when I first started dancing, I was considering getting into porn. I had some friends say to me, like, if you could be naked in front of people and dance and have a good time doing it, like, why shouldn't you do this? It's not for everyone. Most of us couldn't do it. So when you're preparing yourself for set, uh, your first scene, were you nervous? Uh, Yeah, I was really nervous. Um, (laughs) I didn't really know exactly what to expect. Like I knew who my scene partner was and I knew the site that I was filming for, but 
I mean, that's basically it. But everyone was super nice. They gave me, like, the rundown. They, you know, were like, if you ever need to cut, you can cut. Like, we're going to oil you up and do these X, Y, Z positions. And so, you know, it was cool. And then when the camera got rolling, I got very excited. And my pussy started dripping, like, super wet. And that, you know. Then it was it, it was meant to be. Everything like, else is history. You're, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, your first day, you don't know what to expect. I can remember driving to, I lived in Huntington Beach. We were shooting in Los Angeles. And I can remember driving to the location the day before because we had to use maps, like real maps. Oh, yeah. So and I was scared I would get lost. And I didn't <laughs> want to be late. So I drove up the hour the day before and like wrote out every turn I took and made a map for myself. Because <laughs> you are nervous and you don't know what to expect, but... It's a very comfortable vibe. Everybody yeah. wants you to be in that zone and it's very intimate. And once you let your guard down, you know, it's, it's it's some people you sync with very naturally. Yeah. So as you get out there and journey on the road, do you think that you'll be a sightseer? Because that's, you mentioned your social media and that would be a really great way to bring your fans into, I, I tell you, don't do it in real time. Note to you, do not story in real time where you are because your fans will show up. And we love you, but we don't always want to be surprised by you. You know what I'm saying? We'd like to save you for later at the club where she'll be featuring and not run into you when we're at the zoo chilling. Do you have any places that you want to see? <laughs> um, yeah, actually. So I'm definitely like a big zoo girl. Um, I've only been to New York, I think like twice before, and I've never gotten to see the zoo. Um, so like if I had more time, I would definitely do that here. But um, when I go to Mexico, hopefully there'll be something I can do, like go out and like go to the beach or something. Yeah. Um, and then I'm doing one in San Diego. So I have some friends there. Nice. Um, I love San Diego. It's a great city. Um, yeah, it is. And but. it's great to be able to mix in visiting some of your friends on your business trip. <laughs> <laughs> have you traveled to Europe and is there anywhere you see yourself really wanting to go? So, yeah, I've been to, is, like, England still considered Europe? Yeah, I would say so, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been to England. I've been to, like, Germany, Switzerland. Okay. Oh, Switzerland is so beautiful. Switzerland is so gorgeous. Clean. Mm -hmm. I really want to go back there. Yeah, I loved it. Um, like, literally, I love everything about Switzerland. Yeah, I climbed uh, Mount Liechtenstein, I think it's called. Ah. But there was like- I did paragliding off the Swiss Alps. Yeah. Jumped off that shit, hope for the best. You yeah, know? it was so cool though, because there was snow on top. Yep. And like, I've never seen that before. So, yeah. Never seen cool. that before. You born and raised in California? Um, In Virginia. Virginia. That's right. Yeah. But you saw snow in Virginia. But not like on top of mountains. You're like right. That. You're right. It's very flat in Virginia. You saw snow on the street that you had to drive through, but yeah. you know, not so much. Other than hot yoga, which is one of your favorite things to do when you're not working, what are your hobbies? Um, I love playing guitar. Um, oh, what? Yeah. How long have you been playing guitar? Since you were such like, an interesting young lady. Yes. Um. Molly, I love you. <laughs> Molly's going to be so successful. I feel this right here. I'm going to be like, I met her first. Everybody, you know. <laughs> so you play guitar? Uh, yeah, I do. I've been playing since I was like nine. Um, I taught myself. My dad actually taught me. But, you know, learn from home. You teach yourself. YouTube. Um, yeah. And then like I picked up ukulele just because that's like similar. Um, ukulele yeah um, all right but that was like really easy to pick up I've always been kind of like musically inclined but I do that and then I love to paint okay um so that's cool I recently like just did like a bunch of little flower paintings so I decorate my house with them I love that you have outlets yeah because you're going to be sharing yourself so much with so many people when it comes to either being on set or whether it comes to feature dancing and doing events and so having some activities at home that are just yours are going to help you recharge that social battery because it can be draining as much as you love it yet you you know i'm an introvert extrovert so i'll go out on these gigs and like you know, pedal to the metal the whole time, have the best time ever. And then when I go home, I'm like, I might be home alone for three days. Yeah. And I just want to clean out my closet, you know, maybe to the, maybe do a cover to cover read of a book. That's literally um, You know, like, I do. just like, and, and then, and I'm going to be fine. Yeah. And then I, I'm ready. But it's, it's great that you have that balance, painting, ukulele, guitar. These are all such healthy things for your, you know, mind, body, spirit. Yeah. 100%. I mean, like, I also have, like, a pole in my house, so. You do? Yeah, I do. I got, like, the little X pole. Awesome. Yeah. Do you ever do pole shows for your OnlyFans members? Um, I haven't yet, 
That's something I haven't gotten around to, but that's definitely on my list of things to do. Do you do live shows? Yeah, I do. It's fun, right? Yeah. And that's a great them. kind of little teaser of what it's going to be like to feature dance. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's <laughs> um, I haven't done like the live pole dancing, but like on my live shows, I normally do like live sex shows. Right. So like, I bet you know. they would love to see you pole dance. Anybody that's in a country that isn't going to get to come and see you at a Sapphire or at some of your other, and it's a great way to work out your, it's, think of yourself as a comedian. Yeah. You're working course. out new material on your pole at your house. Of course. Like at home practice. And they can watch. At home practice. and Yeah. And they can watch. And how often do you update your OnlyFans and how much are you putting into it? Because you got to strive oh, for a balance. Every day. Like I'm on there every day. And like literally like sometimes I'll be up at like two in the morning bored like messaging people. But like I always put because I put out like full length like sex tapes. So like I always try to put them out once a week. OK. Um, but yeah. And the rest of it is engaging. The yeah. messaging. That's and, a big and, part of it. Yeah. It is because it's global. Yeah. So you got somebody that's eight, eight o'clock in the morning to them. It's three o'clock in the morning to you. But yep. if you're up, you might as well check that message. Exactly. And it's just like cultivating relationships because like you're they're real people. And, yeah. you know, so like when you're talking to someone like it's good to remember things about them. And, yep. you know, like you're actually like forming a friendship or like more with this person. Right. Um, it's kind of cool. It's a lot, but it's really cool. Yeah, and when you start going out more on the road, some of these people you've had great chats with are going to come see you and maybe yeah. they'll bring you your fan for candy or something that they remembered you talked with them about. Yeah. And then you just, you're like, oh, it's, it's comforting. So sweet. Yeah, it's yeah. really like nice and lovely and like, you know, they care about me and I care about them. It's good. And it's a healthy exchange, yeah. right? Both parties are really happy. And, you know, you have this balance because you come into a time where technology plays such a role, but you're also being smart and shooting for other companies and getting out on the road and not just isolating yourself with just OnlyFans. Yeah. What companies have you done scenes for that I know we held you back this long. The listener, the viewer, you know, they wanted to know because they wanted to stop this conversation and go watch some of your scenes. Oh, but yeah. I decided that they would have to be patient and listen to your patient. beautiful voice and wonderful story. What companies have you worked for? Or where can they find your scenes? Um, so I've worked a lot for New Biles. I was their first contract star. So that was basically my whole year last year. Um, smart first year in you don't have to meet a ton of people you work for the same people you know what to expect yeah. you feel safe you feel good yeah it was actually really cool and I really didn't meet a lot of people yeah. at all you get out and you're like I'm the new girl again <laughs> yeah yeah I did it's my first exactly two years was. I was a contract girl so wow. I felt the same way I'd seen people at shows and I knew what companies they worked with by maybe walking by their booth at ABM but we'd never had a reason to have a conversation yeah and then you get out you're like yes I'm her yeah, like we can we can work together now. Yeah, yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, so that's cool. Um, I've worked with Vixen, Brazzers, um, gosh, Reality Kings, but that's also Brazzers. Right. Um, I've done a bunch of like, you know, tiny taboo stuff, like you know, petite girl things. How um, often do they want you to look too young? Most of the time, they they put me up in like very girly little girl type clothes one time I had someone want me to wear like Elsa and Anna shoes and I thought that was a little too much but you know stand I stand your ground stand your fucking ground like this is where I draw the line bro this is where I draw the line no yeah, no 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 I thought that was too much but like you know I look cute in pigtails so sure that's cool but I've also worked with um bang bros and oh they're so fun okay like they're okay really fun. so you go down to Miami and to me it's like a totally different vibe of being on set because there's this office, you know, and the paperwork is such a strong thing there. Yes. Like they're like next level, the newspaper. So your first time there, you're like, what is all of this about? Yeah. I've been shooting for how long and I've never seen all of this, but it's a great operation and their people are so fun. Yeah, I loved, my favorite scene I did with them was the bang bus one. So fun. Because yeah, I loved looking at the regular people just driving around yes. to their normal activities. And throwing the guy out. Yeah, oh my like, God, that Because, you know, the guy fun. fails, you got to get out of the bus. We're yeah. done with you now. We'll pick up a new guy. Yeah. Boom, you're he out. He actually, like, he wasn't supposed to do this, but he just walked out of the van, like, completely naked. And we were in public. <laughs> you know what? The bang bus is, like, so 
reveal it's so uh, big in, in florida I mean, i've been pulled yeah. over we've had cop interactions yeah when i've been shooting for and they're always like hey guys what's going on who's shooting today like they know the bang bus is revered in the miami area and that's a fun trip it really is because you shoot a couple of days oh yeah and you're there for long enough did you get to go out when you were in miami oh yeah i so i have like a lot of friends in florida i spent i think last year i spent like one week out of every month going down there just for like content and stuff okay. so i really got to like Meet, get comfortable meet florida yeah meet florida really <laughs> become one with it yes so everyone can find you pretty much everywhere yeah i've worked with most companies and how many scenes do you think you'll do a year you've done 40 so far yeah um gosh at least 40 more right because you yeah. can do you know if you're doing two three a month yeah. A two, three a week, yeah. and then you're going on the road on the weekend. Uh, you will be at AVN this year, and I'm pretty sure you'll most likely be nominated for a lot of things. For something. Hopefully. That would be cool. Uh, yeah. I think it'll be happening. You're feature dancing, right? This is your first gig. Will yeah. this be your first AVN, or did you go last year? Um, I went last year. Did you um, love it? I did love it. It was like a brand new experience and I really didn't know what to expect but I think my favorite thing was walking on the red carpet and having people like know who I was of course I was so excited and like I felt really successful yeah because you branded yourself you've yeah. worked hard to be here and that contract was very helpful to help you kind of pace yourself it really but it's helped. flattering yeah. and it also means that you have made your mark here, right? Yeah. That you are now part of the industry. Yeah. And that's like that first step of like, okay, now this year I'll probably be nominated. And also, was that your first time signing for fans? Yeah, it was. Okay. It's very surreal. Yeah. Um, but again, it was really cool to like meet the people that enjoy watching my work. And, and also people that you maybe talk to on Twitter that like you know them by their photos that they post or, and you actually recognize them. And you're like, oh, you're so-and-so. This is your screen name. Yeah, I, don't I know definitely your... talked to like a couple girl crushes or something like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, and they're so sweet, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's and so flattering. I got to make like content with them. So <gasps> it was exciting. Super smart. Yeah. I love this business savvy. I could yeah. see you being a very, very, very successful part of this industry oh, 100%. for a long time. And I also see that you look like you make good decisions over there and we're not going to have to worry about you uh getting involved with the wrong people and doing the wrong things because there's a lot definitely of temptation not. in the business yeah i've definitely seen that um but definitely not i'm honestly like more of a homebody in real life so all you that i express yourself at work yeah all that i really need in life is to like get my sexuality out and through work and then i can just come home and and chill and be introverted <laughs> and be for, your yeah. yeah get it but do you cook um my boyfriend cooks for me a little bit okay but, yeah okay well well that's the next thing just you know you can always start with like those meal delivery kits yeah that's how my girlfriend learned to cook the ones where they deliver you everything and the seasonings and everything and then she learned how to make everything and then after a year of that she was actually able to go to the grocery store and put the things together yeah you can always do that but i love this conversation and i love that everybody's going to get to see you at sapphire this won't be your first booking, not just your first booking. It won't be your last booking here. You're traveling. You are going to make such a name for yourself, and you're going to have fun doing it. It's a pleasure for me to meet somebody who's having fun yeah. doing something and also making some money to set up your situation for the rest of your life. Of course. Well, I mean, it's a really big pleasure for me to meet you. I mean, you've accomplished all of the goals that I've set for myself, so... You know, that's awesome. Well, I hope that we stay in touch. You can reach out to me anytime you ever have a question. Yeah. I will be right there for you to answer you. everyone. You were, oh, let's get, it. your social medias are different, which yes. I'm assuming you may, have, may or may not have lost an Instagram or two. Am I right? Um, I know how this happens. Yeah, yeah, so it's okay. <laughs> I understand. We got to follow the rules. You yes. know what I mean? And sometimes the rules change. Well, even if you follow the rules, sometimes they just think... I think I'm too sexy for Instagram sometimes. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. a great response. I had a collab with Young Gravy. Okay. We did an ad together. Okay. We had a collab on Instagram. Instagram deleted it and gave me a strike that it was too sexual for my page and left that shit up on his page. I was like, this is male female discrimination. This is sex worker discrimination. Yeah, it is sex worker discrimination. And, and I was like, 100%. and it was a it was a it was a Christmas ad and I was wearing like a corset. I had stockings, full stockings, I had boots. It was not There's nothing wrong with and that. And the fact that it stayed on his, so I get it. But what is your actual Instagram that you're not gonna lose this time? My Instagram is at maybe Molly. Maybe M-O-L-L. -L. Y, Y, Y. 
remember the three whys. That's really important for the second part here because the Twitter is just two whys. Am I correct? Yes. It's the same thing, but just two whys. Okay. We got two whys on the Twitter, everybody. Okay. Maybe. And three on the IG. And I'm going to make sure you have all of those. And your OnlyFans? It's the same thing as the Twitter, but the two whys. Maybe. Molly, two wise. You are fucking fabulous. I'm super stoked that I met you. You're going to be like a million billionaire. You're going to make so much money and save it. And you're going to be smiling the whole time. And it's going to warm the hearts of the world. And Sapphire got to have you first. And that's how that happened. Thank you for joining us right here. Don't forget to see all the features that are coming through. There's multiple clubs in New York City. There's also events and features starting to come through. Sapphire in Las Vegas. Go to check out the sites. See who's coming through. You never know who you're going to meet just like me it's great having you today and thanks for joining us for another episode of lisa and backstage combo